Mark Ayler for markayler.com and in this quick movie tutorial I'm going to look at how we can create a develop preset. Okay now one of the things that I would uh, recommend that uh, you um, avoid is actually using any of the settings in the basic panel. Uh, I actually sometimes break this rule myself but generally what happens with raw files we need these basic settings just to optimize uh, an image um, and so any any sort of grading look or special effect that we want to apply on top is best done outside of the basic panel. Okay so let's take a look at uh, some of the options that I'm going to do. So um, I'm going to uh, desaturate the image using the vibrant slider. We'll roll that back to uh, maybe minus uh, 65 or so. Uh, it was getting a little bit too colorful for me. Now I want to warm this up um, but I'm not going to use the um, the white balance for this because this might have been optimized for an image and uh, if uh, in a developed preset it might have unexpected results on different images using a different white balance. So I'm actually going to come down to the tone curve for this. I'm going to uh, select uh, um, the red channel and just uh, push that up ever so slightly just to add a little bit of red into this image and then I'm going to select the blue channel and pull that down to add some yellow into this image. It's giving me a sort of a sepia color cast into this image. Now that is going to be reliably played back on a whole variety of image not just this image and that's the real secret to develop presets. Um, expected results rather than the unexpected. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to also add um, some split toning to this one. I just want to add a cool color into the shadows here. So I'm going to um, work towards the blue end of the spectrum. A um, little bit on the cyan side, but that's really quite nice. And I'll just um, cancel that out. Okay, we can actually control that using the uh, balance slider. If I just want to restrict it just to the slightly darker shadows, I'll just put, push that balance slightly to one side. Okay, now I'm going to return to the basic panel and just um, put some of the vibrance back in. Okay. Okay, so that's the sort of look that I'm looking for. And now I want to uh, push that into a preset so I can apply this grading style uh, to dozens or hundreds of images at the same time. So um, let's come over to the panel on the left hand side where we're actually going to find uh, my develop um, uh, presets here. Okay, these are presets that I've already created and you can see I work a lot with presets. But if I want to create a new preset, I'll just click on that little plus icon here. Now, if this dialog opens and everything is selected, uh, this is not a good idea. We only want to record those things that make uh, the look or the grading look um, and everything else must be deselected. So I think it's always a good idea to select check none at this point. Uh, we will have the process version checked and then we just want to look at the uh, just the features that have made this grading effect in this particular image and that includes the split toning there. We also have uh, the vibrance uh, adjustment there and uh, we also have the tone curve. There isn't anything else that I've used inside uh, of this grading effect um, required in order to play that back in a preset. So I'll just call this uh, marks uh, grading. Now you can just put that into the user presets but that can get a little bit crowded if you love presets as much as I do. So you do have the option of creating a new folder there and I've already got um, a grading presets folder so I'll push it into that one there and uh, I'll just uh, hit the create. Okay, and so there is my grading preset. You'll find my Lightroom presets available from my website, markgaylor.com. Okay, so if you found this uh, information useful, just give me the thumbs up, share, and I'll catch you online next time.